Hey everybody, my name is Scott. I'm with the Arizona Hot Tub Factory and they call me the Spa Man. Today I'm going to be showing you how to wire a sub panel from the main breaker to the sub panel and then I'll be doing it from the sub panel to the spa. So there will be three parts to this video. How to wire the main, how to wire the sub, and then how to wire the spa. I'll do a second video at a later date because in the future I also want to run outdoor lights like LED lights. I want to put in an outdoor kitchen. I want to put in a refrigerator, a TV. I want to create an outdoor living space in my backyard. So what I'm doing is I'm showing you how I go about doing that for a backyard for, like I said, the main to the sub to the spa. Now, in our main panel, we're going to be putting a 60 amp breaker. In our sub panel, I'm only going to put in one 50 amp breaker. The box that I'm installing is not your standard spa box. It'll accept eight spots for breakers. So it's what I call an eight place. Now I'll be utilizing two of those for the 50 amp breaker that I'll put for the hot tub today, leaving me six for outdoor sprinklers, for um, what do you call it, LED lights, for a ceiling fan, stuff like that. So I'll be running, instead of number six wire from the main to the uh, sub panel, I'll be running number four wire which will give me 60 amp service. Okay, one of the first things you do when you start your job, locate your main panel. Locate how you're gonna do your wires. Are you gonna, A, go underground? Are you gonna go along the wall? Are you gonna go along the eaves and overhangs underneath the trusses? Or are you gonna knock a hole into the attic and go across the attic and then come out at a different spot? So that's what you basically need to decide. Where are you gonna run your wires? In this particular job that I'm doing, I'm gonna come out either the side of the box or the top of the box, and I'm gonna go right underneath the eaves and overhangs all the way down. Now this is about a 50 foot run all the way down. And the reason why I'm doing this is, right here I've got a water bib. I don't wanna dig underneath. These are quite large rock. Here in Arizona, they do a lot of landscape rock. Really sucks to dig in. The other thing is, over here, this is our Southwest gas. So I don't wanna be digging underneath the Southwest gas or behind it. So I prefer to go through the, uh, across the uh, eaves and overhangs. So I'm gonna go across right there, all the way down and right to here. I wish that air conditioner wasn't running. Anyways, eventually I might wanna take out this window and put in a door so that I have easy access to the hot tub that's behind me but I'm probably gonna put the panel right here. In some of my last videos, several viewers have sent me emails and comments about what kind of supplies I use and what kind of tools I use to accomplish the jobs that I do. So in this next part of the video, I'm gonna show you all the supplies for the job that I'm doing, as well as the tools that I'm using to complete this job. Um, I'll also put up in the caption up here, if you want to forward ahead because it's about an eight to nine minute video i think is what it's going to be but i wanted to be as detailed as i could about what i use as far as supplies tools and how i go about laying out a job such as this i figured i'd give you guys an idea of all the material you're going to need and what kind of tools you're going to need to complete this job now the tools that i use the material the material will change according to what size of um, sub panel I'm putting in and what side of, size of a run I'm doing. The tools are usually the same. So you're gonna need some one inch conduit for this job. Now, if I was doing like number six wire, you would only need three quarter inch. But since I'm doing number four wire from the main panel to the sub panel, I'm gonna run it through one inch and you're gonna need number four wire. Some other things you're gonna need. You're definitely gonna need, you might need some uh, wire nuts. So I've got an assortment of all kinds of things. I've got spare breakers like a 50 amp. I got a 1520. Because sometimes you got to move breakers around. Sometimes your seal tight is not long enough and you're going to need something like this to make your seal tight longer. Other things that you're going to need, some electrical tape. You might need an extra ground bar, some extra nuts. These are things where my suggestion is lay out a, mode, a road map from your um, main breaker to where you're gonna put your sub panel and then write down all the thing. Right here I've got what's called phase tape. I've got green, black, red, white because the wire that I use that goes from the um, main panel to the sub panel 
is number four wire and it comes in black such as this. Now this is number four and it's a THHN4. Now I always use this type of wire when I'm on the exterior of a building, whether I'm running underground, six inches off the ground, if I'm running up, and, up into the eaves and overhang, I always use separate wire. I do not use Romex ever on an exterior job. It just causes problems, okay? Now this is number six wire. This is the wire that I'm gonna run from my sub panel to the hot tub. Now from the sub panel to the hot tub, I always run number six, and there again, it's THHN number six. And I run the black, the red, the green, the white. Now some other things that you're gonna need, an assortment of breakers, because it depends on what style of box you're gonna put in. Like this particular breaker is a square D. Some will be an Eaton, some will be a GE. But you wanna make sure that the proper breaker goes with the proper box. Now these are all GFCI breakers. Some are 50 amp, some are 60 amp. Now let's say you're gonna mount your sub panel to the wall. You're gonna need some, what I said is redheads. Okay, and then you're gonna need a quarter inch bit. This goes into your sub panel and then you hit the end with a hammer and that holds it. When I'm using one inch, I'm gonna use ties like this. So what I'm trying to show you here is set up a road map. This is where my main panel is. This is where my sub panel is gonna be. How many feet from point A to point B? How high is it off the ground? How far underneath? And line it up so you don't waste any material, okay? There again, when I go from the um, sub panel to the hot tub, this is what I'll use. This is what they call seal tight or liquid tight. Now on the end of that, I will put something like this. And then that'll, one, one end will screw into the bottom of the sub panel. The other end will screw in to the hot tub itself. So when I'm running conduit like this outside above ground, you have to use these right here. These are what they call, this is EMT, these are rain tight. You have to have this compression fitting when you're using the rigid EMT so that it seals so it keeps the water out. Now if you have a box like this, this you're going to put on the side of your main breaker. So your wire is going to come out of the main breaker and it's going to go into a box like this. Now they make, to my knowledge, four different styles. They make several different sizes, but four different styles. If you look on the back, it says LL, okay? That means it's an L and it goes to the left. If it's all LR, it would go down and to the right. If it's an LC, it goes down and through. And then if it's an LB, it's down and then there'll be a piece right here. So it just depends on which one of these you'll need, okay? So that's kind of some of the things you're gonna need to do the type of installation that I'm doing in this video. What I'm running is a 60 amp breaker in the main and I'm running it 55 feet away to a sub panel that'll have a GFCI 50 amp to the hot tub. And then what I'm gonna add to it is for LED lights, an outdoor kitchen, uh, maybe a TV set, a stereo, a bar, stuff like that. But that'll be on a future video. But this is just some of the stuff you will need for today's video if you plan to do this at your house. Okay, now we're gonna get down to tools. If you're gonna, we're gonna start here. I've got what's, it's a Milwaukee hammer drill. The hammer drill is what you're gonna need if you're gonna put the sub panel into concrete. You're gonna need a drill bit like this. This is a quarter inch. And then you're gonna use those redheads that I spoke of earlier. Um, it's the easiest way to do it. So another thing you'll need, this is from DeWalt and it's just a DeWalt assortment. It's got all different kinds of drill bits. It's got tons of number two bits. And then I've got the number two bits here. You are gonna go through lots of number two bits doing installs. So it's a good idea to just buy a big box. I've got two DeWalt screwdrivers. I always have extra batteries. Make sure the batteries are charged up before you start your job, just in case. I've got a half inch Milwaukee drill. 
just in case the uh, the cordlesses just don't have the uh, oomph to get through what I'm trying to do. Always have a pair of gloves. I have several different sizes of channel locks. You're gonna need these for tightening down the seal tight to uh, the, the fittings to the seal tight uh, lines. If you're doing the rain tight, you're gonna need two of these to tighten those. I always have two different cutters just in case one gets dull or one breaks. There again, I got another set of cutters. Screwdrivers. You're going to need an assortment of screwdrivers, both Phillip and Standard, and then this one has the square because some of the breakers have a square uh, screw in there that you're going to need to tighten. A ball peen hammer is not a bad idea. A claw hammer, crescent rest, a chisel. If you're going to do any kind of underground uh, lines, you're going to need some PVC cement. You're going to need some primer. You're going to need a way to cut the PVC. Uh, these are just some things I'm trying to show you what it takes to do it. A good meter. I love this meter. It's made by Milwaukee. They're about $130 right now on um, eBay. I just bought a brand new one. Uh, this is where I throw all the screws just so I don't lose them. I put it in red. For cleaning the hot tub, I use nothing more than white vinegar and water. I always have a green towel. Back here, we've got what's called the knockouts. Most of the panels that you'll buy will have either a half inch or a three quarter. Every now and then, you're gonna have to go to a one inch or you might have to go to a one and a quarter and stuff. These are all the different knockouts and it's step. So if you got a half inch and you gotta go all the way up to this, you've gotta make this one to get, th to use this one because this is where you start. So you're gonna start with a little bitty drill hole and then you're gonna use the small knockout until you can make a big enough hole so you can go up to the next size knockout. So you're gonna need several steps depending on how big of seal tight or conduit you're gonna work with. So these are just some things. A 100 foot extension cord is a must if you're gonna have a drill so that you can do your whole job. Another thing you're gonna need is a ladder. I just have a six foot aluminum ladder and then I also have this 40 inch working platform step stool. I like this a lot. I can sit on it. Uh, it puts me up high enough and it's stable. Another thing you're gonna need, if you plan to do any kind of pipe bending, this is a one inch pipe bender. I couldn't find my half inch, my three quarter, but this is a one inch pipe bender. You're gonna need something like that. Another thing, I've got an assortment of nut drivers and all kinds of other miscellaneous tools. So as you can see, if you plan on doing some electrical work yourself, these are just some of the tools that you're gonna need as well as the material you're gonna need. Now, the only thing that changes, the wire pretty much remains the same, but your conduit will go down to, normally I use three quarter inch conduit. Uh, like in here, I've got more stuff. This is a lot of my uh, three quarter inch stuff. There again, extra electrical tape. Uh, screws, I use very, very coarse screws. Do not use fine. Fine, rip out the wood and it won't hold, hold, hold any type of weight. And then I've got stuff like this. So as you can see, it does get quite, um, man, you accumulate a lot of stuff. That's the easiest way to put it. If you're a tool nut like I am, this is right up your alley, man. You'll have no, no shortage of tools in no time flat. So anyways, this is what you're gonna need to get started. And this is a lot of the stuff that I'm gonna be using in the video today. The sub-panel that I'm going to be using for this particular job is a 125 amp, 8 space, 6 circuit sub-panel. It's an outdoor main lug. So I really like these panels. They've got several spots where you can put, you know, anything that you're going to run from your sub-panel to your lighting, your spa, your outdoor kitchen. So I really like these as well as they've got a couple knockouts in the side. That you can use. Now in this particular box when you open it up on the inside, like I said, you've got your eight spaces. We're just going to be utilizing two of them today for the hot tub. just want to take this screw off so I can show you what the inside looks like and that way you can see how we're going to connect this. Okay, so right, this is without any breakers in it. Okay, so over here, this is your common lug bar. And what that's meant by that is this is isolated from the actual 
uh, box itself. So we're going to add a ground bar to this box because it does not come with one. And then your two hot lugs will go here. So usually when we've come and mar uh, wired one, that's how I do it. And then I'll put my anchor to anchor it to the wall. I'll put one here, and then there's one down here, and then there's one here. So that's how I anchor them to the wall. So the only thing that you need to buy, aside from the box, you will have to get the grounding bar and hook that in. And usually that hooks in on this side. And then this is where your common wire. Like I said, the common cannot touch the box. Okay, what I use to mount the uh, sub panel to the wall is what I call redheads. And redheads seem to work the best. Um, just awesome. Basically, you drill the hole, you push this in, then you hit this part with a hammer. Okay. Best way to hold a box is with these, and I'll use three of these. Now, what I used to drill the hole in the concrete, I've got a Milwaukee hammer drill that will not only um, hammer like a slit, like a uh, chisel hammer, it'll also turn and hammer, and it'll also drill, and then you need a special bit. Now this is a uh, quarter inch, six inch, and this is for concrete, so it's for digging into concrete and brick and stuff like that. And this seems to work about the best. So that's what you'll need for the next step. Now this is where I plan to put my sub panel, because in the future I would like to take out this window and put in a door that leads from the master bedroom to the spa area. So I'm going to put my uh, sub panel right here. Now the sub panel cannot be any lower than 36 inches, so I'm going to probably keep it about even with the window, maybe a little bit. It cannot be near any kind of water lines and stuff like that, which there aren't. Now there is an air conditioning here, but that's not going to bother anything. So I'll put the sub panel here and then I'll come out and I'll go across all the eaves and overhangs all the way down. Next thing, I want to be a minimum of 36 inches off the ground and I want to be under where the window's at. So 36 is right there. I'll probably put it at about 40 inches off the ground and keep it just to the left of where the window is. That gives me enough space in the future to put in the uh, doorway that I want to put in. That's about all there is to it. Push. Okay, first thing you're going to do is take your anchor, put your anchor in the spot, find the hole. Oh, come on, baby, where's it at? Get it up in the hole, push it in place. Okay, once you got it into place, get it as level as you can, and then you'll mark your last three holes, and then you'll put holes in there, and then you'll hit these with a hammer. Usually I use a punch and a hammer and then I get that done, okay? Okay, most cell phones will have a level on it and I use my, that's all I do is use my cell phone. I get it as close as I can and pick where I want it. Once I got that, I'll grab the drill, make my next hole. Okay, we have it pretty level because when you go like this, it's off, lay it down, it's level like this it's off so I've got it pretty level all the way across I actually did go ahead and put in all four I put one at the top I put one here one here and then I put one over here so I just ended up putting in all four now when you go to put these in that's all you do is put them in and hit them with a hammer nothing fancy I didn't use anything you know no sledgehammer I just did a normal hammer you know with a claw on the end of it and just hammered them in not a big deal okay now my electric is gonna come out the side and go up all the way up there and then it's going to go across okay once you've got it your box mounted to the wall inside the box you have all kinds of knockouts you have one here you have some back here now these are all where you can connect all your lines either coming into the box or out of the box so i'm going to use this one for my line coming in that's going to power the two lugs here the common and the ground that i'll put in i found out the ground has to go on this side and then this lug right here is a half inch. I'm actually going to use what's called a, um, uh, it's a cutter that will actually make this hole a little bit bigger because I want to use a three quarter here. And then over here I'm going to use, uh, my other two will go for the rest of the stuff that I'll do in several weeks. But uh, 
I don't want to come out this far. I actually want to keep it up against the wall a little close, and then my I'll do, use my uh, knockout cutter to cut out this one right here. So I'll go ahead and show you how I do that. Okay, when you got your knockout, what you're going to do is you're going to unscrew it. Pretty simple. It's got three pieces. This is the piece that cuts. This piece goes inside the box. This piece right here, th this piece right here will slide into that piece and it kind of pushes it through. And you can see it cuts it on an angle a little bit. It's got pointy edges on it and stuff. So what you're going to do, you're going to slide it like that. Make sure you put it the right way. The flat side goes on the bolt. The bolt goes up into the hole. And then, whoop, you're going to take this piece and you're going to screw it down on top of it. Now, when I do it, and I get it where I want it, I pull it as far away from the wall as I can to give me a little extra clearance. I'm going to go like this until it hits it. Okay, once you got it to where it touches it, then you're going to grab your wrench. Okay, and then, like I said, I pull it this way. So I got it there, just like that. Grab your wrench. And that's all you're gonna do is turn it. Nothing hard. The longer the wrench, the easier it is. I'll show you what it's doing inside here. So if you watch, it's actually pulling it down time I do it, just pulling it down. If you've got a socket and a ratchet, it goes a little bit faster. Sorry for the shakiness, I'm doing it with one hand. Ah, it's almost there. You'll hear it go pop, and then you'll hear it pop again. Now it's getting tough. It'll take you a good minute to do this. Now it's getting easy. There it goes. It's gone. Pretty slick. Makes that hole bigger and that way I can take this and I can stick it up inside of there just like that. And that's what it looks like from underneath. Pretty cool. Okay, this is the knockout I need. Now this has several size knockouts so that you don't have to use a knockout cutter. I want to take out the smallest one because I want to put this chase nipple from the inside coming out. So I just need to get this smallest one out. So you need to be really careful so you don't bust out the other ones. Okay. So all you got to do is hit it with your screwdriver and then bend it. Okay, pretty simple, but take your time with that. You don't want to knock the rest of these out. Now to hook up the uh, conduit to each box, we're going to use one, one of these connectors right here. This one's called a one inch LL, which means it's a one inch connection and it goes to the left. They also make an, an LB, which means the connection will actually be on the back. Okay, and then like this one, this is what they call an L. This one's called a, a one inch LR, where this one's called a one inch LL. This one goes to the left, this one goes to the right. Okay, and then this will go into the box, and then this one will go into the box. And then they make what's called a nipple that goes in here that'll screw in there. Okay, so these are just a couple connections that you're going to need to go into the boxes. Okay, next you're going to take your chase nipple. And take your LL box and you're just going to screw it in there. Now what I'll do is I'll start here and I'll get it to where it's pretty tight and then the last part of it I'll tighten it down a little bit more just like that to get it to stay in place. Just like that. Next you're going to take this, just make sure that they unscrew a little bit so it's a little bit loose and screw that down onto that. 
Make your channel locked. You don't have to go, don't have gorilla hands, just get it snug. So this is our main square D box. Again, we got knockouts right here. We're gonna knock this one out. Then we're gonna run our conduit up to the top of the box and then we're gonna connect it to the silver conduit up there in a 90 degree and then we're gonna go down underneath the eaves and the overhangs all the way down to the end. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna knock out this one. Now I don't wanna knock out all these other sizes. I just wanna knock this one out. So before I did that, I went and I checked on the inside to make sure there was no wires near it that I was gonna pierce or that I was gonna hit the bars that uh, have the current running to it. So you just barely hit it. You can see where I've just made a crack. You can see where it's starting to crack. Whoop, ah, I hit it too far. So I'm gonna have to grab that and kind of work on it and bend it out and stuff because I don't want to break out the next size. Okay, you can see I got this all out. So that's, what I'm gonna do is a chase nipple is gonna come through here. That's gonna screw like that. You're gonna have a compression fitting. Compression fitting goes like this. Okay, then I'll tighten it down with a pair of channel locks. And then my pipe will go up like this. It'll make a little kick. It's gonna make a little kick and then it's gonna to connect to there and I'll have to move that over a little bit. Okay, pretty simple. So basically I'm gonna use this. This is a nipple, I'm gonna use that on the inside. I'm gonna use a washer just so that I can take up some space. And then I'm gonna use washer on the outside. It just gives it a little bit more stability because as you can see, these can be popped out. I don't want anything to move on me. So what I'm gonna do is put that through on the inside, put the washer on the outside. And it just screws together. Just like so. I'll make sure this is tight. And then what I can do is I take these two screws off and when the wire comes down, I just run the wire and I'll run the wire probably all the way to the ground. I always make sure I have enough wire and then we'll go up and we'll start connecting up there to where that one comes down. Okay, the wire that I'm using to run from the main panel to the sub panel is THHN number four. So that'll handle a 60 amp service Okay, as I cut the wire, I'm marking it. So I've got one black wire, which I don't have to mark, and then I'll have one that I'll mark in white and one that I'll mark in green. This is probably the only time I do not buy wire that is colored. And I don't think they really make, the minute you get bigger than number six, I don't think they make this in colored wire. But anyways, I always mark it here and then I'll go back and mark it about a foot. And I'll do it at both ends as I cut the wire. And I've got to cut about 70 feet. So I just always do it this way. Um, I'm always trying to be as safe as I can. I'm not a big fan of this phase tape uh, because I've seen it come off and I've seen people get hurt. I've seen things get wired wrong, but try to take every precaution you can. And that's just the way I do it. So I'll do it for, I don't have to do it for the black of course, cause it's already black, but I'll do it for the white and the green. Okay, if you look up there, you can see how I kind of angled it so it's going to be closer to here. Because this right here, from here to here, is about an inch and a half, maybe two and a half inches off the wall. So I put, I'm going to put a little bend in it. So what I did is I bent the tubing just ever so slightly right here. Okay, every now and then you're going to have to bend a piece of conduit to get it to fit right and look clean. This is what they call a conduit bender. This particular bender bends one inch conduit. Now the one inch conduit is bigger than the three quarter and the half inch of course and it requires a different size conduit bender. So I'm going to show you how we go ahead and bend conduit. Now I just need to put a little kink in that one just to get it to where it's coming down from the top stuff. So basically you're going to take it, stick it in there and I just need to go in there a little bit probably. I always measure from here. I always measure from here over about four inches because I can always cut. And basically you're gonna put it on the ground like so. Step on this part, and I'm just gonna pull up a little bit on the bar. I don't need to come up very far. That should do it. And what it does, it'll put a little kink in the bar. That way when I'm coming down from my bars that run underneath the even overhang and I make my 90 degree, 
I can make it make a little bend and get it a little closer to the house as it goes down the side of the box. So anyways, that's how you use a conduit bender. There's water in the Okay, I now have the black, the red, the white, and the ground are all coming out of the conduit. It all goes up there, and if you look, it's very even all the way down. Now what I did for the ones up there, I measured from the edge of the even overhang, 43 inches, and that's where I put my first screw. I put my hangers like that, and I put two at the beginning, and then I skip to put another one. Now right here, that's my rain tights, and that keeps all the water out and stuff like that. That is required by code. Okay, with this part, this is what they call compression fitting, and this is a rain tight. On the inside, it has a seal. This green seal keeps water from getting in there and stuff, and then you grab on right here with a pair of channel locks, and you grab on here, and it's got a little compression fitting right there, and it clamps down on the on the uh, piece of uh, pipe. So I got another hanger right there, and if you walk all the way down, it's nice and even. So, anyways, we'll walk all the way down to the other edge. Show you how I did it down here. Down here, I put two hangers right there because we got to the end. I got that right there. Now coming down there again if you look I'm nice and even with that wall all the way down so now my wires come out here they'll go through the nipple this is my ground now since I'm using number four wire number four will not go in to the side of these and stuff the biggest you can put in these I believe is number six Okay, what I wanted to do is I wanted to show you how I hook the common and the ground to this smaller lug. Basically what you're going to do is you're going to buy one of these. I'm not sure what they're called. I know it's for a grounding and for bonding. So what happens is you're going to take out one or two of these screws right here. You take this screw and it actually slides down in the center of this one because through here is where your wire is going to go and then there's going to be a pincher up here. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to take this and it's going to slide all the way down so it comes out right here. And then you're going to take it with your screwdriver and you can stick your screwdriver through there and then you're going to put that and then you're going to screw it in. Okay, and that's basically, you know, basically sit just like this one does. It'll be screwed in there nice and tight. When you're done with that, then you're going to take this and this piece is your pincher, and then it goes down and it pinches it just like so. So basically, as it comes down, it will pinch the wire, and that'll either work for your common wire or it'll work for your ground, because like I said, with these two particular, the biggest wires you can put in there is number six, but they do allow for this, and it is and will meet code. So just thought I would show you that that's how we do that when we don't have a way to get that wire in there. Okay? So. so this is your ground. The ground is mounted to the box. This is your common wire. The common wire is isolated in plastic so it does not touch the ground. It does not touch your two hot lugs up here. So, and you'll hook your common down here. So I try to get everything as close to the bottom as I can. Some people will put them up at the top. I don't like to do it that way. So anyways, I'm going to go ahead and wire the sub panel. I always wire the sub panel first after I get all the wire in all the conduit. Hey, sorry everybody, but uh, my battery went dead. So I wanted to show you guys how I came out of here, through here, and hooked up the ground, the common, and the two hots. But uh, the battery went dead, and... While I was waiting for it to charge, I just started wiring everything. So anyways, I put a hot wire 
hot wire. Here's my two hots. I got my white common. That's all isolated in plastic. And then I got my ground over here on the side. Okay, now that I have all this wired correctly, I'm gonna put the panel back on and then I'm gonna go wire the main breaker. And then this part of the video will be done. And in my next video, what I will do is I will show you how to wire from the sub panel to the hot tub. And then we'll get it all fired up and running. So anyways, that's all you do. Put that on there and then uh, and close it. Okay, we've got all the wire running down. We have wired the sub panel. At this point, you need to dig down within yourself and decide, are you capable of finishing the rest of this? Because this is where it gets serious. Okay, I've already taken the cover off, but this is kind of what you're dealing with. This is your main breaker. This is your main lug. I shouldn't say main breaker. This is your main lug to the house. Here's your meter. The wires come through here. They come up, they go down. Hot wire, hot wire. 200 amps, and then it goes down. From this point, what you would do is, first things first, you shut off this breaker before you touch anything. Now, like I said, I'm using number four wire. So since I'm using number four wire, over here is your common. I can't put the common wire into that, so I'm gonna have to add this to that side. Same thing, the ground is over here. I'm gonna have to add one of those, which I've got enough space all over the place to add it to it. Plus, there's a spot down here where there's a bunch of ground wires. So there's several places for the ground wire to go. The common wire has to go there. So, I didn't bring a tripod. I'm gonna have to add a 60 amp breaker to this box which I'm gonna put right here. I'm gonna change these two breakers out to split 20s. And that way I can uh, make room to put the uh, 60 amp breaker down here. Like I said, I wish I brought a tripod. Uh, I forgot to bring it. So I do apologize. My wires are over here coming out. They're gonna come through, through the nipple. And then the two hot wires, I got a ground bar right here or I can go up there. I'm probably gonna come down here and then just fish the uh, common wire up that way. So I'll go ahead and show you how I go about doing this. We've got our main turned off. All the breakers have been turned off all the way. Now down here, I was utilizing before these four breakers for these four wires. So what I did is I put in two split 20s, moved all the wires up to make room for my 60 amp breaker that supplies my sub panel, okay? I ran my wires in this side, they came up, and there's where the green wire lug is, right there. Okay, then I ran the white wire across the bottom, came up, I got the white wire there, I always put it in one or two places. I came up, I make a U-turn, and I bonded it right there. Okay, so that's all done. Now, behind here, these are all the wires for the, uh, for the breaker itself. Now, I usually will not cut these too short, so I left them really long, because as you can see, this breaker box is very busy. In other words, there's no more spaces. I gotta start putting in these split 20s, and I really don't wanna do that. In the future, if I wanna do any more remodeling of this property, what I would do is put a sub panel beside the box, and then I would wire this into there and wire it over, and maybe put a 100 amp here, and you know, just kinda change some things around. But anyways, I ran it around so that I left these about 24 inches long, and I came over here, and I got the black on the bottom, the red on the top. Now what I'm going to do is I'll put this right here. This is my meter. Okay, let me get the meter set so it doesn't fall. Let me set the camera. Well, what I'll do is I'll go and I'm going to turn on the breaker. Okay, breaker is on. It is set. Okay, I'm going to set the camera right here so that you can see what the meter says. Okay, take my two leads. Okay, I'm on each side of the hot. That's the main. I'm at 246.6. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna flip on the breaker. Okay, this is the only one being turned on. Breaker's on. Again, we'll take our leads and we'll touch them to each side. I got 246.6. 
So everything is hooked up correctly. We can go to our sub panel. Airplane flying over, guys, sorry. Air traffic control is not working with me. My request was peace and quiet today. <laughs> Anyways, um, now you can go to the sub panel. You can turn that on, fill the hot tub, and voila. We can jump in this thing in the afternoon and have a great afternoon of hot tubbing. So that's all there is to it. Okay, everybody, we are now completely done with our entire 60 amp wiring sub panel job. We've got all the wire hooked up to the 60 amp breaker. It runs through the conduit. Everything is clean all the way down. So I'm gonna walk down to the sub panel. I wanna tell you right now, I appreciate you guys showing up. If you enjoyed this video, in the bottom right hand corner, please hit subscribe, hit the bell, hit the like button and leave a comment. Thank you everybody. Right here is our sub panel. Everything is wired there. And as I turn around, we are now filling the hot tub with water. We got about another foot to go and this hot tub will be completely filled with water and then we'll fire it.